Morning, Mark. Good to see you as always. Let's Morning. start with Manchester United then. How important was that dramatic win over Liverpool in the FA Cup yesterday? Well, good morning to you both and everybody else in the UK who is tuning in. Massive win, absolutely massive win. I, I can't underlie how important that was, especially being at home as well, and especially against their fiercest rivals in, in Liverpool. It's a type of season-defining win um, that if you do happen to go on and really achieve something, like to lift the FA Cup would be a great achievement, especially some of the places that they've been this season. Uh, or get into the somehow manage to get into the top four, or if the coefficients go England's way to top five, I think uh, Manchester United, Eric Ten Hag and his staff will look po back upon this result uh, as being a, a, a real crucial moment of that season. I, I, I do feel sorry for Liverpool, even as an ex-Manchester United player, I thought they had the better of the play, but just goes to show, and especially in our game, if you don't take your chances, that you always leave yourself open for uh, what occurred to happen to you. Uh, morning, Mark. Yeah, you mentioned Eric Ten Hag there. Mm. Uh, Gary Neville seems to think that the new ownership will have made their mind up already on Ten mm. Hag. But what do you think that victory will have done to his chances of staying the Manchester United manager in the long term? Uh, look, I, 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 unless Gary may, Gary may have some inside information that we're not privy to, but I really don't think that they've made their mind up totally. Uh, if they have, I, I think that they would, you know, think to themselves, you know, especially after yesterday, th this man deserves a, a third season. And and so far as I'm concerned, you know, if, if there's understandable concerns, and it has been for quite some time uh, about the managerial situation, but I think what they've learned over the last 10 years, and we all have, they're constantly chopping and changing, especially at a big club. It takes then that bit much more of a bit of time to get the new guy in, to get his new players in, the new staff in. And by that time, you're into the second season where all managers in the second season find it tough, regardless of how they've gone in the first season. Let's not forget how well he did play in the first season. Um, so I, I think that he deserves that opportunity. Now, the start of next season, if they start to lose regularly, if things are going completely against them, I can understand them perhaps wanting to make a change then, but but not so far as the, this season or the beginning of next season. I do believe that he needs he, he deserves that opportunity um, after the, the, the two seasons that he's had to to go for the third season. Because when you are a manager and you're presenting to your, to your board, the vast majority of managers will say, by season three, this is where we should be and what we should be doing. Well, let's give him that opportunity. What about Liverpool then, Mark? Their hopes of quadruple are over mm. in Jurgen Klopp's final season. Just how damaging mm. do you think this defeat could be against a close rival as well? I actually think it's to an advantage you've got international break to, um, to 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 sort of have a sit back and say, look, listen, we're still uh, are in the mix for the Europa League. We're well in the mix uh, for the Premier League. We've already got one trophy. Um, so let's just sort of, you know, it's disappointing, yes, um, but let's just keep going forward. It, it, generally, when you do lose a game, if you've got one three days later or even a week later, it can take a little bit of time to recover, especially if it's a big game against an opponent that's really close to you in the league, like with, with Liverpool, who are going for the league. So I think it works in their favour. Um, like I said, they've, they've still, uh, you have to say, are favourites for the Europa League. They're in a great position in the Premier League. Um, they should be OK. They just need to put this behind them uh, and look forward to, rather than backwards. Uh, and just a quick word on Manchester United's semi-final opponents, Coventry, of course, you know, a side who uh, we were used to seeing in the Premier League back in the day, in the, in the late 90s and so forth. Incredible win for them against Wolves late in the day. A, a great late turnaround. That, that's a fantastic achievement by them to get this far, isn't it? Yeah, unbelievable. And I want to say congratulations. I know you got, you got a little bit of stick for, for a different incident, but Mark Robbins I played with as a young player at Manchester United uh, in in the reserves, in the A-League, in the B-League. And, and he was an integral part of that Manchester United story. He will forget that winner that he hit against Nottingham Forest in that FA Cup run uh, way back when, which started, uh, you have to say, the, the sort of modern Manchester United's winning ways. And to see him performing so well as a manager in his team, it's an outstanding achievement, like you said. Uh, and they'll have a great day at Wembley and they fully deserve it. That was a cracking game. Uh, everyone here in Australia as well, that wasn't the most advertised game that was, that was going to be on, uh, were really, really taken aback with the excitement um, levels that were provided by that game.
Yeah, absolutely brilliant game that. Well, let's go to another one of your former clubs now then, Mark. Aston Villa, who drew one all with West Ham in a game which saw the longest VAR check in Premier League yeah. history. It took nearly six minutes to rule West Ham's winning goal out. What did you make of the incident? And were you at all concerned at the length of time that the decision took? Look, since VAR has you know, come into the game, we've always been concerned about the length of time that decisions have taken. But originally, originally, Pierre Luigi Colina, who was in charge of the whole operation, always said that accuracy, which I agreed with, accuracy was more of the decision, especially in big games, was far more important than the time that it took. But it, obviously, after the amount of time that we've had with the VAR and the amount of controversies that you, you would expect it to be a, a little bit less than, than the time that, that it took. Um, but we saw that as well in the Europa League as well with West Ham were involved with Freiburg as well when it took far too long. But in terms of the incident, Socek definitely handles the ball. Uh, there's no doubt about that. I'm biased, yes. But if you look at his shoulder, I think it was Don Hutchinson who was on the international coverage here in Australia. He made a really good point about looking at his shoulder, which gave it away because it was that desperate to put it in. His shoulder went and his arm led then and basically handled the ball or else the ball doesn't get. I'm not so sure he didn't foul Eric Conser as well. That could be another point. But I just think that they obviously wanted to make doubly certain um, that, that it was the correct decision. I believe it was the correct decision. I feel sorry for West Ham. I thought West Ham were the better side throughout the 90 minutes. It was a great point for Aston Villa, especially in view of the fact of what happened to Spurs at Fulham the day before. Um, but both decisions, that one and the Antonio one, were both correct decisions. And that is the type of incident that we do have VAR for, because in the past, before VAR, um, you know, perhaps both goals would have been given and you would have had, you know, afterwards, you know, when people are going for top four places, Champions League, um, a lot of recrimination. So they were both correct decisions. Like I said, yes, they have to work on the length, um, but uh, that, that's something that I would still rather take uh, over than getting the wrong decision for such an important game. Yeah, interesting to see what Dermot Gallagher will say on those uh, decisions as well, of course. But I agree with you. I think they were both the right decisions. Uh, quick word on Villa as well, your old side, another one of your old sides. How concerned are you at the moment? You know, a couple of performances that haven't quite been up to standard of previous performances. Yeah, I was a little bit concerned. I had those, obviously, the two defeats on the trot, especially the one at home uh, against Spurs. Um, and, and that was... Uh, sorry, the draw. There was a draw against Ajax away because I thought Ajax done really, really well. And then that real thumping last week. But I thought they'd come back very well uh, during the week against Ajax. And like I said, that was a really, that was a, a point one yesterday. Um, they, they haven't been, you know, for a long, long time, not only used to playing in the European competition, um, but also having the spotlight turned on them. And I think there's been a couple of times this season when the spotlight have come on them that they haven't really, so you could say, passed with flying colours. But still now, you know, coming into this start, this, this you know, the, the final furlong of the season, if you'd said to anyone, regardless of a Villa fan or not, at the beginning of the season that they would be in the quarterfinals of, of the Conference League and they would be in fourth place with literally well, with nine games to go, I think any, any Villa supporter definitely would have signed. And I think the rest of the supporters would have sort of thought, no chance. Well, they are. Um, so they've still got a, they've got some difficult games coming up. We know that, but they've done a fantastic job, and there's no reason why they can't finish in that fourth place. Now, like I said earlier in the piece, the coefficients, the way it's going, it looked as though that England may overtake Germany and get that extra place for the Champions League, which will pretty much make sure it will be Aston Villa and Spurs that will be in that fourth and fifth place. Uh, Manchester United might have a few things to say about that, but. That would be an absolutely fantastic achievement uh, for them to get into the Champions League after what's happened in the last couple of years. As ever, always talking a lot of sense. Thank mm -hmm. you very much, Mark. Thanks, guys. Take care.